Boy, oh boy, what a day it was for the Miami Dolphins. The Miami Dolphins defeated the Denver Broncos 70 to 20. My voice is a little bit hoarse because, guys, <laughs> there was a lot to celebrate. Uh, there's one thing that it came up short of celebrating, and that's having the most points as, as a one team in an NFL game in NFL history. Uh, but that's neither here or there. Big win for the Miami Dolphins. They improved to 3 0. Now, guys. Lots of highlights to get through. I mean, almost uh, four minutes of it. And uh, let's get into the first play. Well, the first scoring play. It's a lot of scoring play, guys. Tyreek Hill, big bomb, jumps in the crowd. He's loving it. He's having a grand old time. And uh, then Devon Achain gets into the mix. And guess what? He's getting The rookie's getting his stripes, man. He's, he's earning every single little thing uh, that's coming his way because... He has a big game ahead. Uh, but Broncos do score at some point throughout this game. Uh, Russell Wilson finds Cortland Sutton to put the Denver Broncos uh, within seven at that point. But, hey, tough game. Tua with the nice little flip to Devon Achain, and he fights a couple of fenders to get into the end zone. I mean, this, this running attack was absolutely brilliant today. Raheem Mostert flipping into the end zone. What a play. How about this one? Corlin Sutton kind of stumbling, bumbling. And who strips it? None other than Javon Holland. And then who else scoops it? Andrew Van Ginkle. Man, unfortunately, he wasn't able to get into the end zone, but he did put the Dolphins in great field position, which sets up another Raheem Moser, almost untouched touchdown. And, man, they're stepping. They're liking it. This offensive unit was having a grand old time today now. Oh, I loved every second of it. It was awesome. Absolutely awesome for the Dolphins. And then Deshaun Elliott almost comes down with the INT, but Kater Kohu made sure absolutely no one came down with that ball, which is a bit unfortunate, but, uh, hey, prevented them from scoring. And how about this? Raheem Mostert getting in for, what is that, his third rushing touchdown of the day? I mean, these running backs, they were sniffing the end zone. Javon Holland, once again, with... A punch out strip, and who else? Cater Kohu flying onto the ball. What a what a what a great play, Raheem Mostert, a receiving touchdown. He what what? Oh, he didn't step out of bounds. He tight roped the sideline and got in for six. What an awesome play. Oh man, man, how about the celebration? And the slide. <laughs> man, this Dolphins team is having a blast. And it's, uh, it's really great to see. How about this little double doink action from uh, Manuel Hockba coming down with the pick. Fortunately, couldn't get into the end zone, but guess what? Dolphins defense set up the, the offense into great field position. Von Achain receiving touchdown. Uh, so how many is that for him so far? What was that three? Two, uh, two rushing, one receiving. I mean, the rookie's having himself a day. He went from literally having little to no touches to getting, what, three touchdowns so far in this game. The chemistry is awesome between uh, McDaniel and Tua. And then this is uh start off the fourth quarter. Robbie Anderson, Robbie Chosen, Chosen Anderson. Uh, whatever he's going by now, he finds a connection with Mike White, and he's loving He's hyped. The South Florida native is absolutely loving what the Dolphins are doing today. But uh, this was uh, something that was unforeseen, and it was a kick return uh, touchdown off of a kickoff. And, uh, man, oh, man, that was could have been costly. Uh, too bad the Dolphins already had almost 50 points on the Denver Broncos by that point. And, uh, yeah, the theme of this is either turnovers or touchdowns, and there goes that man with the track speed, Devon Achain, with his fourth touchdown of the day. Uh, third rushing. He had a, also a receiving touchdown. So, big day for the rookie. He was super glad for him. Uh, and he dropped 50 points on a lot of people's fantasy benches. I'll say that. Manuel Ogbo gets the only sack, I believe, of the game. And then how about the other running back, Christian Brooks? I mean, just Dolphins were just feasting on the running game. And here's <laughs> David Long, just live reaction. Go, 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 go. And that pretty much wraps up the highlight, guys. It was a beefy one. It was four minutes. Uh, but 
Let's start it off with the bad elephant in the room. Miami Dolphins. We're on the verge of possibly kicking a field goal and setting NFL history. And they didn't do it. As much as I am upset about it, and trust me guys, you will see because I was recording during the the game with uh, my little camera here and live reaction happens. I was upset. You know, it's upsetting when you have the possibility of breaking NFL records and you know about it because McDaniel spoke about it in the post-game press conference. They're aware of it. Uh, he just thought that's not the goal for this team, which I can understand, but man, just do it. Just do it. What are three more points going to do in terms of accumulating a, a team? You're in position to make history. Go make history. That is my mindset. Um, let me know if you disagree, but uh, definitely, you know, it was a bummer to the fact that that was the case. Uh, other news, Dolphins obviously broke <laughs> their own franchise record for uh, points in the game, and that was previously set at 56, so this is a really high bar to uh, to follow up for anyone in the future for the Miami Dolphins to try to surpass that, but uh, the odds of that happening are slim to none. I mean, this is kind of like a once-in-a-lifetime type of deal that's, that just happened, but it's glad to be there, and I was super happy with the outcome of the game. Now, let's uh, get into some of the stats and I'm not going to kill you with them because, trust me, they are a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. All right. Um, D- Dolphins had 31st downs to Denver Broncos 16. Uh, third down efficiency, Dolphins were 5 of 9. Broncos were 3 of 12. Fourth down efficiency, uh, Broncos were 0 for 1. Dolphins were 1 for 3. But I would take one off if you, like, really want to nitpick. It's because of that, that fourth down play where... They could have gone for the field goal, but they insisted not to and took a knee. Uh, total yards of offense, 726 for the Miami Dolphins. Uh, for the Denver Broncos, it was 363. So not the greatest defensive day in terms of shutting down a team, but hey, when your offense is scoring like that, I think there's no issue with allowing that many yards, especially when your offense is basically doubling the other team's offensive output in yardage at least. Uh, two, 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 two. We'll get into the like the rushing and passing stats in a sec, but let's talk about penalties. Not the best game for penalties. Denver Broncos had seven penalties for 46 total yards. Dolphins had six penalties for 55 total yards. Um, and then time of possession, Dolphins had the ball for 33 minutes and 21 seconds. Denver Broncos had it for 26 minutes and 39 seconds. Uh, with all that being said, uh Lots of numbers to go through, guys. I'm, I'm telling you right now, lots and lots of numbers. Uh, we'll start off with the Denver Broncos' Russell Wilson quarterback. He went 23 of 38, uh, had one touch on one interception, was sacked once for a loss of t- uh, 12 yards. That was uh, shown in the highlight earlier. Yeah, not much. There was a lot of pressure on him. Uh, I'm pretty sure we'll go through the QB hits and definitely kind of run through those uh, QB pressures, QB hits, etc. But... Uh, weren't able to get him down until the very end of the game. Uh, and then let's go over to Tua. Had himself a very, very efficient game. Uh, 23 of 26, 309 yards, four touchdowns, zero interceptions, zero sacks. Mike White came in at the end of the game, went two for two, 67 uh, total yards of and one passing touchdown, so five passing touchdowns for Miami Dolphins. And then they can combine that with their five rushing touchdowns, so we'll get into that in a second. Uh, Denver Broncos rushing pretty much non-existent. They were playing catch-up from almost the very beginning of the game after that Tyreek Hill touchdown. They were just obviously trying to run the ball, but you got to just air it out and hope for the best, and unfortunately, it didn't work for them. Uh, Javante Williams, 11 carries, 42 yards. Uh, Jaleel McGoglin, he had five carries for 15, and then everyone else had under 10 yards. It was only two other ball carries. Devon Achain was a leading ball carrier for the Miami Dolphins. 18 total carries, 203 yards, and two touchdowns, longest of 67, which was that big time touchdown. Uh, and then Raheem Mostert, right behind him, 13 carries, 82 yards, with three touchdowns on the ground. Christian Brooks, nine carries, 
for 66 total yards. Uh, Ingold and Mike White both got carries, uh, but none of them were positive yardage. Uh, receiving Corlin Sutton was the Denver Broncos' leading receiver, eight receptions, 91 yards, one touchdown off of 11 targets. He got targeted in the end zone another time, but uh, ball was just a little bit too far for him. It was a pretty unfortunate for him. Uh, Jerry Judy, five receptions, 81 total yards. Marvin Mims, three receptions, 73 yards. Everyone else had 25 or under for the Denver Broncos. For the Miami Dolphins, Tyreek Hill finally eclipsed 100 once again. Nine receptions, 157 total yards. One touchdown, longest of 54 uh, off of 11 targets. So pretty efficient day uh, catching the ball for Tyreek Hill. Robbie Chosen, one reception, 68 uh, total yards. Um, and one touchdown. Uh, by the way, rushing yardage, 350 for the Miami Dolphins. For the Denver Broncos, 69. Uh, back to the Dolphins, seven receptions for Raheem Mostert for 60 total yards. Uh, and then Braxton Barrow is right behind with two receptions for 33. Devon Hodgkin, four receptions for 30 with two touchdowns. And uh, everyone else had 15 or below. Darren Smythe for Craycraft. And uh, Julian Hill was even targeted. Corlin Sutton. Sorry, buddy, but you had two costly fumbles. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say it was uber costly, but at the end of the day, um, those put the Dolphins in prime time position a lot. Um, not only that, when the offense was just going the way it was, uh, it just wasn't great for him. Andrew Van Ginkle recovered one, and Cater Kohu recovered the other. Uh, defensively, for the Denver Broncos, leading tackler was Valerian Turner Yell with uh, 13 total tackles, 10 solo, and then uh, Alex Singleton, 9 total, 5 solo, 1 tackle for a loss. And then key stats for the Denver Broncos defense, Zach Allen, 2 tackles for a loss, Nick Benito, uh, 2 tackles for a loss, 1 QB hit, uh, Jonathan Harris, 1 tackle for a loss, and then Marvin Mims had the uh, kickoff return touchdown. Leading tackler for the Miami Dolphins, Javon Holland, eight total, seven solo, one pass deflection, uh, and two, two forced fumbles. Stud. What a stud. Uh, David Long Jr., eight total tackles, five solo. And then uh, Deshaun Elliott had a pa uh, two pass deflections. Justin Bethel had uh, two tackles for a loss. Uh, Xavier Howard had a QB hit. Let's see. Andrew Van Ginkle had a QB hit and a tackle for a loss. And a fumble recovery. Uh, Emmanuel Agbo, one sack, one tackle for a loss, one QB hit, one pass deflection, uh, and an interception for Emmanuel Agbo. Return for five yards. Uh, Jerome Baker, two QB hits. Let's see. Kater Kohu, two pass deflections. Christian Wilkins, one pass deflection and three QB hits. Uh, Bradley Chubb, one QB hit. Zach Sealer, one QB hit. Deshaun Hand, one, ta uh, one pass deflection and one QB hit. And then last but not least, Raekwon Davis, one QB hit. Um, I want to say I saw when I was cutting up the highlight. I saw Christian Wilkins went into the tunnel early before the half. Wasn't sure what was going on there. Um, if anyone has any information, please let me know. I didn't go out of my way to look it up or anything, but um, hopefully it's not an injury, and hopefully it's not you know a situation going on between him and the Dolphins because uh, as it stands, the Dolphins still do need him. Like they're he's a very big contributor for this Miami Dolphins team. All right, kick returns. Marvin Mims Jr. with two kick returns, uh, totaling for 121 yards, but the big one was the 99-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. Punt returns. Braxton Barrows had three punts returns for uh, 30 total yards, longest of 15. Uh, Will Lutz went two for two for the Denver Broncos in terms of field goals and two for two on extra points. And then Jace Sanders went 10 for 10 on extra points. Jace Sanders Said in the pregame video, make the kicks. You did. So let's freaking go. Uh, Denver punting, Riley Dixon had five total punts for 234 total yards, uh, three of which were in the uh, 20 and then 61 total yards. Jake Bailey, one punt for 48 total yards. Guys, huge, 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 huge win for the Miami Dolphins. Uh, not much you can ask for aside from possibly going the extra mile, kicking that field goal, and getting the points. But the only scoring the Miami Dolphins did today were touchdowns, and that's absolutely amazing. This is something that any NFL team should want uh, as long as it's in a winning matter. 
uh, because you can score touchdowns and that's pretty much it and you can also lose the game but uh, 10 touchdowns offensively is absolutely amazing it would have been killer should, should have been a defensive touchdown at some point but fortunately Denver's offense was able to tackle some of the Miami Dolphins defenders when they got the ball in their hand so uh, more specifically Andrew Van Ginkle and uh, Emmanuel Agba uh, aside from that absolutely love the forms I said in the pregame run the ball and run it efficiently 350 total rushing yards the rookie Devon Auchin had an absolute killer game um defensively put pressure on Russell Wilson they did they put a lot of pressure on him but weren't on, unfortunately weren't able to bring him down uh until the very end of the game aside from that there was pressure coming in at all times and uh he was able to evade it for the most part and get the ball off but aside from that a lot of QB hits I mean I'm telling you guys right now the Dolphins had a total of 12 QB hits they were getting after him and then special teams Kick the ball. Kick the ball efficiently. Make it through the uprights. 10 for 10 on extra points. Uh, so not much to complain about there. Uh, Going to harp on it as much as I can. In the grand scheme of things, go for that field goal. Make yourself be etched in NFL history forever. But that's my thought process. Uh, McDaniel said that's not the Dolphins' goal. Uh, so this is the four, fourth time in NFL history where uh, – a team that scored 70 points in a game. Uh, second most yards in NFL history in a game. Uh, let's see what else we can rattle off here. First team with five pass TDs and five rushing TDs in a single game. Uh, second team to ever have multiple players with four TDs in a game. Uh, the 2004 Kansas City Chiefs achieved that. Uh, Tua had more passes than incompletions. Four touchdowns three incompletions given given a few of the touchdowns were kind of gimmies kind of tossed forward but the one that I loved the most was I believe the little flick to Devon Achain that was absolutely sick I mean just whew, didn't even didn't even pay no mind uh what else can we rattle off here Devon Achain set rookie record for rush yards in a game 203 uh Largest margin of victory in Dolphins history, 52 in 1972 against the New England Patriots. Uh, 50 in this game against the Denver Broncos, and then uh, previously 1973 against the Colts, 44 total points. Can you guys guess what happened in those years uh, for the Miami Dolphins? Uh, I will kind of give you guys a little hint. Ended with them getting these two little rings, so... Not saying anything, not saying anything, but here it is. Uh, and then last but not least, um, yeah, Raheem Moster and Devon Auching had four touchdowns in the game. I think that's the most uh, in Dolphins history tied with Ronnie Brown in 2008, Mark Ingram in 1994, and Paul Warfield in 1973. Historic day for the Miami Dolphins, and it could have been even more historic. Oh my God, I'm getting frustrated. <laughs> um, no, it's it's a massive win, and if you're still watching at this point, I really appreciate you guys. But I'm absolutely cooked. I got to empty out my uh, tailgate from all the stuff, and I got to put this video online before the clock strikes midnight, and it's no longer football Sunday. Uh, but let me know what you guys thought of this Miami Dolphins game. Obviously, if you're a fan, you loved it for the Miami Dolphins. But if you're not a Miami Dolphins fan, probably didn't. Uh, and then before I get out, real quick, let's go over the AFC standings, uh, divisional standings, at least for the, these two teams. Kansas City, uh, I believe, yeah, is 2-1. And, one, <clears throat> and uh, Las Vegas is yet to play. Well, they're currently playing probably by the time I'm making this video. And then Los Angeles Chargers, 1-2, and two, ended up getting a win against the Vikings. Denver falls to 0-3. They are in the bottom of the AFC West. Uh, but they won't have company because Vegas already has a 1-1 one -one record at least. For the Miami Dolphins, 3-0. Buffalo Bills, 2-1. New England Patriots and New York Jets tied for 1-2. Patriots got the head-to-head -head win against the Jets. They stand above them. Uh, but big game coming up next week. Miami Dolphins at Buffalo. Um, so, what, three road games to kick off the season? I mean, absolutely killer, but hey, as long as you keep winning, it's all good. 
Uh, yeah, that game will be October 1st, 1 o'clock p.m. The game will be broadcasted on CBS, and it will be in Highmark Stadium at Buffalo. So with that, I bid you guys adieu and call it a night. It was a tremendous day. Dolphins are on top. And uh, what a day. What a freaking day. Peace.